We three asteroids heading to Earth will f*** up Christmas Day. Good morning, Merry Christmas to everyone, and yeah, I thought I was going to be getting a day off today, and perhaps I should have taken it, but just too good of a story happening, and I didn't even know it until this morning. Apparently, there are three near-Earth objects that are making relatively close calls or close passes to our planet. And this is something that I do believe is newsworthy, especially when you consider that none of these three astero asteroids really qualify as being planet killers. They are all substantially smaller than that. The biggest of them is about the height of a 50-story building, something along those lines. Certainly enough to ruin your day, but not large enough to create a planet-wide catastrophe. That being the case, though... It's the kind of thing that still needs to be taken very seriously, and I think we should at least examine what sort of results would come about if one of these asteroids, whether they be the smallest of them or the largest of them, were to impact our planet. So it's worth noting that of these three asteroids, all of them fall into the category of near-Earth objects that we really haven't detected yet. The vast majority of objects of this size category have remained unidentified, especially those that are relatively close to the sun, those objects that we really can't see because of the glare of our star. That being the case, then, some of these could very well have surprised us. Indeed, two of these three objects were actually discovered this year. Fortunately, none of them were on a collision course, but if they were, there wouldn't have been a whole lot we could have done about it because we still are not adequately prepared. So, what would have happened if one of these had been on a collision course? Let's find out. <laughs> So let's start out with 2022 YL1, one of the smallest of these three asteroids, approximately 60 meters in diameter. And since I've been very mad at the government as of late, let's go ahead and have this asteroid impact in Washington, D.C. Well, an asteroid of this size, and if it was comprised out of rock and not iron, would not actually be able to reach the ground. It would instead airburst. However, if it did airburst, even though it wouldn't really leave much of a crater, the damage would be unbelievable. Now, according to our fun little asteroid impact tool, this would create an airburst of 15 megatons of TNT, approximately 2,500 feet above the ground. This sort of impact, by the way, happens about once every thousand years or so. I don't know if it would be the largest airburst in recorded history. The 50 megaton Tsar Bomba probably holds that record, but nevertheless, it would certainly be the largest airburst that we have ever witnessed from an asteroid, but since it happens about once every thousand years and doesn't leave much of a crater, we can't really determine how many times this has happened or how many cities and civilizations may have been devastated by it and left records of some sort of cataclysm without fully understanding what caused it. Regardless, this sort of thing happens a little bit more often than most people recognize, but not too often, which is a good thing because the damage would be utterly catastrophic. We'll start off with the fireball. It's about one mile in diameter and would kill an estimated 726,506 people. Also, an estimated 736,000 people would receive third-degree burns. Another 1.4 million people would receive second-degree burns. Clothing would catch on fire within 11 miles of the impact, and trees would burst into flame 20 four miles from the impact. In other words, we would have a massive firestorm that would consume everything from Washington to Baltimore, and anybody who somehow managed to survive that would also be exposed to a 224 decibel shock. 
shockwave. Now this would kill an estimated 18,112 people. Anyone within 2.9 miles would likely receive lung damage. 3.8 miles away and you get ruptured eardrums. Buildings within 6.7 miles would collapse and normal homes within 8.9 miles would collapse. Honestly, I think more than 18,000 people would be killed by the shockwave, but perhaps this tool is taking into account the number of people who are already dead from the fireball. But in case you're not satisfied with the size of this firestorm, we're going to make it a lot more intense with a ridiculously powerful windstorm. Now, the winds generated by this kind of impact kind of beggar belief. We're talking over 94,000 people would be killed, and the reason for that is the fact that you're looking at peak speeds of almost 5,500 miles per hour. Winds within 1.9 miles of the impact would be faster than the storms on Jupiter. Homes within 3.2 miles would be completely leveled. Within 5.6 miles, it'd be like being stuck in Inside an F5 tornado, and nearly all trees within 9.6 miles would be knocked down. And of course, this kind of wind would certainly fan the flames of the previous firestorm. So, a really, really devastating impact, and by the way, from an object that's about 60 meters in diameter, most of these we have not detected. Which means, of course, if one of these objects were to sneak up on us unexpectedly, we would not have time to even evacuate the affected area, assuming that we could even accurately determine where exactly it was going to strike. That having been said, one of the objects that we detected this year 2022 TE14 is actually the largest of the three asteroids. We're talking about the height of about a 50-story building. Now, this again is not a planet killer, but I'll tell you, what it could do is still quite staggering. Now, since New York is a favorite target of just about every disaster movie writer, let's go ahead and have it impact just off the coast of Staten Island. First of all, the crater would be 830 feet deep on the sea floor, 0.75 miles wide, and it would create an explosion the equivalent of 747 megatons, more energy than all the nuclear weapons on the planet. The fireball that this would create would be absolutely stunning. An estimated 2 million people would die from the fireball, with 1.1 million people receiving third-degree burns, another 2.7 million people receiving second-degree burns, clothing would catch on fire within 13 miles of the impact, and trees would catch on fire within 27 miles of the impact. So you would have a firestorm consuming much of southern New York State, along with northeastern New Jersey. But as was the case with the previous impact, if the fireball doesn't get you, don't worry, the shockwave probably will. Over 400,000 people would likely die from the shockwave. Anybody within 11 miles of the impact would suffer lung damage. Anyone within 14 miles would likely have ruptured eardrums. Buildings within 25 miles would collapse. And homes within 33 miles would collapse utter devastation, the likes of which we have never really seen on our planet, even in the case of nuclear weapons. And it gets even worse when we're talking about wind speeds. The peak wind speed at the center of the impact would be over 33,000 miles per hour. An estimated 2.5 million people would be killed by this wind blast because wind within 7.3 miles of the impact would be faster than the storms on Jupiter. Homes within 12 miles would be completely leveled, and within 21 miles it would feel like you're stuck inside an F5 tornado. Nearly all trees within 35 miles would be knocked down, and of course, this would also fan the flames of a firestorm that was already raging. Obviously, that would, this would utterly destroy New York, Newark, and all the surrounding cities and suburbs utterly catastrophic. But of course, you may be saying, yeah, come on, come on, like it would really hit a major city. Very unlikely, most likely, it would hit the water. Well, if it did, 
The results would be even more catastrophic because up to this point we've been talking about an asteroid either impacting the ground or in very shallow water like off the coast of Staten Island. If it were to hit the deep sea floor it would first of all cut right through the water as if it wasn't even there and still dig an 830 foot deep crater but it would also create a tsunami over 1300 feet high. The consequences of such an event would of course be global. We're talking about devastation all the way up the eastern seaboard, assuming that this asteroid were to hit somewhere in the Atlantic, to the northern coast of South America, to the shores of Europe and Africa too. We're talking about devastation that would create a great deal of damage to our economy, many, many millions of deaths, and God knows what else when we're talking about environmental consequences. And once again, this is from an asteroid that is much, much smaller than what NASA regards as being a planet killer, and we have not detected the vast majority of them. At the very least, we need to be focusing a great deal more effort on early detection. If we can do that, most probably we can evacuate the areas that might be affected by these smaller but still devastating rocks. Or perhaps we can look at deflecting them in the future, but once again, since we've already used our one asteroid deflector, that is the DART, we really need to work on building more of them and also explore other ways of deflecting asteroids because it may take other methods depending on whether or not it's a nickel-iron asteroid or a comet or something else. Now, to be perfectly clear, none of the three asteroids we've discussed in this video are coming anywhere near to impacting the Earth, nor are they projected to come anywhere close to our planet anytime in the near future. They are very close as far as solar system scale distances are concerned, but we're talking 642,000 miles away at the very least. Not really too bad and nothing to lose any sleep over, but what I lose sleep over are the asteroids that we haven't detected. Not planet killers, those are very, very infrequent, but rather the much more common and still devastating asteroids like the ones that are passing us by this Christmas Day. Please hit that like, please subscribe, we are well on our way to 100,000 guys, I can feel it coming, and as always, stay angry about space!